are Popcorn, Piss, and Vinegar, giving you a raw take on movies, television, and pop culture. My name's Chris. I'm Scott. Uh, I'm JB4. And I totally forgot what this place looks like. I've been gone for I'm like two weeks. so glad y'all came weeks. back. You, you didn't leave me in this place all by myself, by myself like you normally do. J- before it's we move on, people here. Dude, before we move on with anything, I must commend you with your solo effort. <laughs> Instead yes. of just doing the show by yourself, you decide to do the show as me, as JB4, and as yourself. Well, yep. you know, it's it's the rich little in me coming out. That's I good, I kind of wanted to make it happen. You know how they say, how do they I, wish, say? <clears throat> I wish everybody saw me the way my dog saw me. I wish everybody heard me the way you heard me. Yeah, well, it, oh, he, well. dude, I tell you, he... he there was a lot of times I listened to it, and I actually understood the transitions. I could tell who was who. Yep. Like, I wouldn't really hardly get confused at all, you know? He played himself very quiet and reserved. He made himself look good. You uh, know, well, he, uh, that's not, Mayday actually said that I, I was the worst character. Yeah, yeah, you did yourself the worst <laughs> on the Not Real the Movie worst. News. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but JB4, you know, your, your words were very deliberate and very slow mm-hmm. and very well-pronounced, and me, I was basically obnoxious. So that's pretty much, yeah. pretty much pro, uh, you know, spot on. So With a job. lot less stammering yeah, whole for me, shit so... Whole shitload less stammering all, yeah. all in general. So I had to do that like six times, but yeah. Well, that's good. Well, look, we're back on track. You know, we're we're uh, back from well, me. I'm back from vacations and out of town trips and all that. So ready to get this bitch kicked into high gear again. So excellent. All right, let's move on to some movie news here. Let's um, have some. first of all, the big one, Dan Aykroyd, kind of like took a massive shit all over uh, Paul Feig, who was the director writer. Whoa. Of the uh, Ghostbusters, all female, you know, saw that. Yeah, like like massive shit, like to the point where, look, we told him to do one thing. He didn't listen to what we had to say. He ended up costing Sony an additional thirty to forty million dollars, and needless to say, he won't be working at Sony again for a long time. Like that kind of took God. a shit on him. Yeah, like hardcore. I mean, he is Dan Aykroyd. It's not like he's me or anything like that. Well, I mean, so. yeah, he is Dan Aykroyd, but to be honest with you, I mean, as much as I love Dan Aykroyd, and I'm sure that, like, you know, his pussy is fucking hurt over, you know, the Ghostbusters yeah. thing not working out. I mean, dude, that it's kind of unprofessional. You know, like, I mean, you can tell these, yeah. you can tell these dudes are getting old now. I mean, like, because they're, it's like, it's like John Carpenter. You know, like he's like a fucking angry old man now, and it looks right. like Dan has finally graduated to that club as well. Well, yeah, I was just about to say, like, he hasn't really made any pop culture contributions in the past 10 years of any yeah, I, significance. The only significant you know? thing that I can think of that, like, was his last, like, kind of f- really truly funny role was he played the um, he played the, the, the uh, brain doctor in Fifty First First Dates in that Adam Sandler movie with Drew oh. Barrymore. That's the only real last big thing, like as an actor, that I can think that he's done. As far as like a writer, yeah, you, you're probably right, John. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I think his last great role was the uh, assassin on Gross Point Blank. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was great. I thought it was great. What year did that come out? Uh, I think it came out before, before 50, 50, 50 first. Right? Yeah, was, yeah. Then, you know, like Tommy Boy. He well, that's what that, I'm thinking. I'm, I'm but curious. I don't know the timeline. The, the Tommy Boy movie. I know Tommy Boy came out in like probably like 91 or 92. <laughs> Something like that. And yeah, and yeah the uh, the gross point blank. That wasn't until like mid 90s. So wasn't that like 96? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So, so hey, there, there you go. I mean, yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I just kind of left the bad taste in my mouth because I, I sat there and I was like, well, you know, when I'm reading this. I'm like, well, dude. What made you think this was a fucking good idea to begin with? You know, I mean... Well, and he was all behind it before. Yeah. It's just, it, yeah, it's, it seems like sour grapes and... I, I can't believe that this is about Ghostbusters. That's what I... I mean, I can't believe we're... You know, there. I guess there are some projects that I, I hold dear to my heart, but, I mean, come on. It's Ghostbusters. Well, it's not I mean, like Apocalypse Now. Well, but I mean, Godfather series. At one time, for the longest time, Ghostbusters was the highest grossing comedy of all time. I mean, it's a legacy movie. Sure, it is. It's still an entertaining film. Yeah, it's it's, it's still great. I'm not taking anything away from it. I'm just saying it's not like. It's not Star Wars, okay? It's not Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, no doubt. But I mean, in a way, it is Star Wars in the fact that, I mean, dude, the pop culture significance of that property. Yeah. I mean, it, it's. It's majorly Star Wars, but I mean, as far as like that level of stuff, 
You know, I mean, it's a pop culture icon. I mean, dude, look at the fucking opening of Stranger Things season two. The kids are dressed like fucking Ghostbusters. And yep. 19, man, that movie, you, dude, you're older than me. You know, that movie was fucking huge when Again, it came out. Huge, yes. Pop culture, yes. But to go out and potentially ruin your career over that movie, mm. I don't know that that's worth it. Well, Again, I, think, I, yeah. I, I think it's a legacy thing is really what it is. I mean, obviously, Ghostbusters and this Saturday guy, Night this Live. This is the Blues Brothers guy, though. You yeah, know? but, it, but yeah. really, honestly, the Blues Brothers is a movie that really caught a lot of, like, caught a lot of its, like, momentum after Belushi died. That movie was a flop. Was, was a, it? Oh, big time. Blues Brothers was a big time fucking flop. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it was our, when I was... A kid, it came out in eighty, right? So I yeah. was ten, so and there's I no mean, way my parents are gonna let me see it. But when I saw that scene where the nun hits him, I must have rewound and watched that a hundred times. Well, the, I let my ass off as a kid. The Blues Brothers was, I mean, like they they came out with 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 uh, Animal House, and I mean that that was massively successful. And with the Blues right. Brothers being that kind of being the follow up. You know, it was kind of seen as a disappointment. I really think Ghostbusters is a legacy piece for Dan Aykroyd, and I think that's all the right. reason why all right. his pussy's hurt over this whole thing. But I think we can all agree it's fucking retarded, I you know? know? All right, um, Universal, um, they're saying that they're interested in casting The Rock as the Wolfman, and pretty much any hope that I had for my beautiful Universal Monsters hopes and dreams is now gone, why? dead, and why? buried. Um, because The Rock is a beefhead action movie guy. He's a Fast and Furious guy. He's a G.I. Joe Tom guy. Cruise. Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise, though, dude, like, starred in, like, Risky Business. He starred in fucking Vanilla Sky. He starred in the fucking Kub uh, the Kubrick movie. I mean, he's been in a bunch of... Of critically acclaimed shit. I know you love The Rock. I know you love I him, do. but he ain't right for the Wolf Man, dude. I, I just don't see. I, I, Tom, to believe it, I think Tom Cruise was an odd choice for the Mummy. I just feel I, like I, that's I, weird. I don't think but, he's. I don't think he's a bad choice at all. I don't I, think he's a bad choice. I was just surprised that they went in that direction to pull somebody like Tom Cruise in for this movie. So to pull mm -hmm. in The Rock, it's like, all right, well, I get it. You're they're going after the big names. Yeah, they're going after the big names, but I mean, there's so many probably other big names that you could go after. I mean, yeah, you could put a gun on me right now and tell me, you know, hey, who who would who would you pick? I'd have to think about it, but I can tell you right now, anything to do with the Universal Monsters, and you're trying to launch an Avenger-style franchise del Toro. with these kind of characters. Well, he starred in The Wolfman in 2010. Yeah, he tried right. to come back, and it flopped. But I think that there's a lot of other people that you could consider for that. I think The Rock I'm, literally blows my hopes out of the water here in that casting choice. I really hope that changes. I like him in other stuff, but this is a big... You're thinking someone with a lot more gravitas, like... I I'm thinking somebody who's like, dude, I'll tell you who I'd pick. And I mean, I know it would probably be really, really typecast. Dude, I'd get Hugh Jackman. That's who I'd get. Oh. Uh, to, mm. play the, to play the wolf, man. I'd get Joaquin Phoenix. Tell <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Great choice. Yeah. Yeah. It's got that sort of like simmering <laughs> anger thing going. I think that's a great choice. I think I think that choice is far superior to The Rock. You put The Rock in a superhero movie, that makes total sense to me. You put him in a movie that's supposed to be something that's titled as a – it's now titled The Dark Universe is what they've called it. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, you put him in a piece like that. I mean, Rock doesn't really – I mean – he doesn't really have the depth to me to, to play in a role like that. He could surprise us. I know that as an actor, he's been relatively okay with taking risks, at least early on. I don't know if you guys saw that movie um, that the director of Donnie Darko did. Oh, really? yeah, that movie. Uh, Are you talking about uh, Walking Tall? No, no, Walking Tall is a great movie, too. But no, uh, uh, South South Side Tales. Yeah, it, whatever. It's a really like weird that. movie. I love that movie. And uh, the Rock Southland is, Tales. Southland, Southland Tales. Tales, right? And he's taking some risks as an actor. He's doing some weird shit. Uh, I remember thinking that as I watched it, I went, "This is a mess." But The Rock is really like standing out against people that have a lot longer experience and and chops in the industry. So I, I, I'll see it. I'll give it a chance. For sure, yeah. I'm. I'm. I mean, like, uh, Universal Dark, uh, the Universal Monsters. I've loved that shit since I was a kid. I mean, my mom was a black and white movie fanatic. I mean, I've seen 
all that shit, you know, and I, and I always loved it, and that really kind of dampens a lot yeah. of hope for me. To I, see I'll, that. I'll go one further for you. I don't think it's going to ever get made, and if it does, it'll be in seven or eight years. Even though that trailer just came out where they show, you know, the old school monsters, I just don't, I don't know that they're on track. Is is Dracula still part of it? Or Dracula they... Untold is not part of it anymore. Okay. They're saying that The Mummy is going to be the first official launch film for the for the franchise. And Got it. If you say, you know, you don't know if they're taking it seriously, here's the piece of news. They've put okay. together a team that's called the Monster Men. That's what they're... They're they're coining them as okay. these are the guys who are the setup for the uh, for the team. A uh, guy by the name of Chris Morgan, um, Alex Kurtman. Um, Alex Kurtzman, you probably know him. He's a producer for the um, for the the CW. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, universe stuff. He also was one of the uh, co writers. I'm sorry, Andrew Ky- Kreisberg is the CW guy. What Alex Kurtzman did was is that he was one of the guys who wrote the Star Trek reboot with uh, Re- with uh, Roberto Orsi. Right, that's where I know. But here's the big names that they've pulled out that they've announced who are part of the team now. Noah Hawley, who is responsible for Fargo and for Legion on FX. Wow. They've also pulled in Aaron uh, Guzikowski. This dude wrote Prisoners for Dennis Villeneuve. Holy shit. And they've also pulled in Ed Solomon, who wrote the first Men in Black movie. So they got some some heavy-duty fucking dudes. And they're saying the guy who wrote Prisoners, he's been pulled in specifically to write the Wolfman movie. So, like, he's been hired. So they're not fucking around. They're trying to move forward. Um, some of the properties that they're talking that they've announced, they said that a Frankenstein movie that's going to have Javier Bardem as the monster, and yeah. they're going to do a Frankenstein and a Bride of Frankenstein movie. They also said they're going to do one for The Invisible Man. Um, it looks like Johnny Depp's been confirmed to play. Confirmed? The, uh, yeah, he's been confirmed. They say he's the the front runner, not confirmed, but they say he's like right. The he's name. minutes away he's from sign. Name. He's minutes away from signing the contract. Well, apparently, I've I've heard that Pirates of the Caribbean bombed. Is that true? Um, yeah, okay. yeah, it didn't do well. It bombed in America. It did excellent overseas. Yeah, I mean, I've heard it did pretty well on opening weekend. But and in Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, Creature of the Black Lagoon wasn't mentioned in the rollout. It's in the trailer, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I have no doubt that they're going to try to resurrect everything. And then um, the uh, uh, Alex Kurtzman said that most likely what you're going to end up seeing is that once they release the monster movies with all of the different characters, they're going to do the Bring It All Together Avengers thing. But when they do that, that movie is going to be a remake of Van Helsing. And Van Helsing is going to be the movie that brings all the characters. So, uh, yeah. my, my theory with the Van Helsing <clears throat> thing is that he's actually going to be the villain, and they'll be going against him. Totally. As, a, as yeah. opposed to him being on the team. Like, that'll be... Oh, yeah, yeah. He's going to... Van, it's going to be the Van Helsing movie, but I am think the thing with it is, as we all know about the Universal Monsters, is that all the characters, they're all quote-unquote evil but they're all misunderstood correct and i think the thing with it is is that van helsing is going to be the guy who's going to be the big adversary it's going to be van helsing and if i'm a betting man he's going to come in to kick their ass but then he's going to end up understanding them at the end is most probably what it'll end up well, being. That, then he'd be a hero right i don't like that yeah i mean <laughs> it, i mean i'd rather them i'd rather him him kick their ass and then dracula rises from the dead and helps them realize their potential and becomes the Tony Stark of their team, per se. And then from there, we bring back Monster Squad, and that would be fucking fantastic. So, I mean, I'm I'm in it, you know, but... Kick him in the nads. But uh, not the... (laughs) Wolfmans don't have nads. Yeah, nards. Nards. Kick him in the nards, Nards, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Wolfman, um, as long as those nards aren't attached to the rock, I'm a fucking happy dude. (laughs) I, I, I think they should have a woman direct Frankenstein simply because a woman wrote it. You know, I think that'd be interesting, which I'm talk i'm sure more yeah we're going to talk about that that in detail on our show topic today which is going to be a spoiler free review of wonder woman looking out i had a couple of uh couple of our listeners kind of hit me up well had somebody hit me up directly and i read something indirectly where somebody said um on our guardians of the galaxy show review at uh with uh not real radio they said we love the show the show was fantastic but we wish you guys wouldn't have spoiled it so I'm, I'm going to do I'm it a favor. I'm happy that we and, had a couple of listeners. Yeah, I'm happy that, like, you know, we now have four listeners instead of two. I'll do what I can do for those guys. That's it. Sure. All right, and um, the last piece of the uh, universal thing here, um, 
it looks like um, Warner Brothers is talking about uh, bringing up a lawsuit over the uh, title Dark Universe. Yeah. They've announced Dark Universe as the you know as their monster thing. Well, um, Dark Universe is going to be a title that's also going to be used for their Justice League Dark movie, and is going to kind of launch that sub franchise off of that. But I don't know, dude. I'm thinking we'll get into that conversation in a minute with Wonder Woman. I'm willing to bet that the deck has kind of been reshuffled at Warner Brothers. Agreed. So we'll kind of mm-hmm. take a look into that in the next couple of minutes. But uh, last piece of news, and this is something you can go back and look at, I think maybe uh, maybe a couple of months ago, maybe about seven or eight shows back, we talked about um, uh, uh, Universal Paramount has the, um, has the rights to uh, Star Trek, and there was a, uh, a, a Star Trek fan film that was called Annex R. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they eventually put it together a big lawsuit. Uh, uh, Paramount ended up like kind of like settling with the people who made this movie so they can actually move forward and do their fan film. But it brought up all kinds of crazy shit. Because I think, uh, what was it, John? They raised, um, was it a million dollars yeah, in crowdsourcing? Yeah, over a million dollars. Yeah, so I mean, that's a... That's pretty fucking crazy, you know. Yeah, but, um, but it was like it—it it was all on the screen. Like these people were not some punks in a basement looking to run a grift. This was an exceptionally well-produced piece. Uh, Robert Hatch was in it. Yeah, guy from Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, he played uh, played Apollo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, it wasn't uh, that million was going to go towards a product that was going to look like 10 million at least so yeah go on oh and i'm sure you can make a pretty fucking rocking small independent feature you know with a million dollars in your budget oh yeah but um they have another group of fans that came out uh but your point to that bringing up the star trek thing your point was these fans want to make the star trek film and paramount you know, Paramount played ball with them, but Paramount came in with like a fuckload of stipulations. Yeah, right. Hardball right. with them. I mean, yeah, that's like, the yeah, point. Yeah, they played leading hardball with them. Yeah. And leading up to this story is that um, there's somewhere in Europe where they've raised um, 150 euros, 150,000 euros, 150 I'm sorry, euros, wow. to um, produce a prequel movie based on the character of Voldemort from the Harry Potter series. And I don't really know dick about Harry Potter, but I tell you, I saw about maybe 30-second clip of that fan film. That mm-hmm. fucking shit looked good, like it was real good. WB stood in and said, you know what? We're going to work with you to make sure that your movie gets made. And I think that there's a lot more risk in WB doing that than Star Trek doing that. Because, you know, these yeah. these fans got together and they said, look, we're going to base something off of the original series that revolves around the original Enterprise crew. Now, this new show that they have coming out, this uh, uh, Discovery show, I think takes place, what, 10 years before the original? Yes, I think that's the case. So, okay. yeah, so they're coming in and they're doing all this bullshit and getting everything working and all that crap. And um, they uh, they come back out they come back out and do all of this bullshit. And uh, I totally lost train of thought because of that fucking crazy noise. What the fuck was it's that? A storm. It's rain. Oh, it's raining again. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's been raining for like a fucking week and a half. But yeah. um, but anyway, you know they uh they took the they took the risk. Uh, Paramount, you know, with, with the, they didn't really I feel have that much of a risk. But WB, no. I mean, shit, dude, they're producing a fucking movie series that's like a direct prequel to Harry Potter with these uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Yeah. You know, I, I think that a Voldemort, you know, prequel kind of plays a lot more risk against something. Well, he, like he's that. a main character. Yeah. You know, it, that's uh... it. Just depends on the story they tell and how. You know what? I'm sure Rowling has, like J.K. Rowling, has an idea of where the Fantastic Beasts are going. Yeah, you know yeah. that trilogy has already been mapped out. So after that, it's just a matter of oh, what story shit. are they going to tell, and how does that relate? And does that? I'm not going to say infringe, but does that step on anything that she's doing? I'm sure she already knows. And I mean, me and Chris kind of talked about this before, but I, if. If it's a go, it's a go. There's no, uh, you know, yeah, well, like you're I, talking about risk, but I have a, they already, if they, if they said this is a good thing, we'll let this Voldemort movie go. She already has that pen inked out. Yeah, well, and, and, yeah. and I mean, and that's, that's fine. You know, she can give the thumbs up and, it, and the other part of the conversation is, you know, she can give the thumbs up and that's all fine and all, but I mean, WB are the ones that still hold the fucking rights. You know, I mean, they can sit there and. and oh no, you're right. You're right. You're exactly right. I'm just saying as far as if they write a Voldemort movie and 
she writes a Voldemort movie. Warner Brothers isn't going to make a Voldemort movie unless she writes a Voldemort movie for them to produce, is what right. I'm saying. So if these guys are making a movie, then that means she probably has no interest in doing a backstory of Voldemort whatsoever. Yeah, that could be. You, you know, know but she might just be like, I'm done with Harry Potter. Let's move on. And either just, that or it dovetails. I mean, I heard that uh, um, the main wizard... Dumbledore. Dumbledore, thank you. Shows up in... Well, yeah, I mean, uh, he's, he's been cast. Beasts. He's been cast. Yeah, uh, so... I think Jude Law's playing him, huh? Yes. Yep. Jude Law is, well, is so there you have it. I mean, well, so I, I can't imagine that a prequel series isn't going to feature... It may, the birth it, but it doesn't Voldemort. necessarily have to have his backstory. He could just right. show up. Just like it's not going to have Dumbledore's origin story. He just shows up. It, right. It, again... Those puzzle pieces have been put together. I have yeah. faith that she knows what she's yeah, doing. Yeah, and I mean, all the bullshit that we sit here that we pretend to know, yeah. you know, <laughs> here's what it all comes down to. Bravo WB for not fucking around and letting the fans yeah. have their dream. I mean, that, yeah, that's supporting the that's fan fucking films. Cool. You, you used to have that from George Lucas until fucking Disney took yeah. over. And I mean, I guarantee you, if you sat there and you went and crowdsourced a movie and you said, I'm going to make an independent movie, um... A uh, twenty-minute feature where Darth Vader goes and hunts down a fictional Jedi character, and we're going to make a movie to where Darth Vader is going to have the last stand with this Jedi that he was hunting down. You know, in between Episodes Three and Rogue One. Oh, Lucas would be, you get your cease and desist letter, and and it, it would take you. Pro you'd probably get that as a text message. <laughs> right. Dude, how the right. fuck do you know my number? We're Disney. We know every fucking thing. Now, now cut has, the shit before we send. Disney dropped the hammer on. I mean, fucking I right, they did. I still, oh, yeah. I still see fan films being made and they, circulated. Yeah, I mean, they make fan films and circulate them. But I mean, the thing with it is, any asshole with a camcorder can go there and like make a movie and be like, right. "Hey, look, I'm not accepting any money for this. I did this of my own volition with my own dollars." But if you go in there and you crowdsource something, mm -hmm. and you're making money to produce something. That that's where the whole argument with the Paramount thing came in. It, you're yep. infringing upon someone's intellectual property, and we understand where we sit there and say, "Well, look, dude, I made a, a million dollars to make a Darth Vader movie, and one million of those dollars are still going to go into the production of this film." Well, dude, the carpenter that you paid to build all those sets, those guy, that guy profited from building a set that contains our intellectual property. Right. And the thing with it is, is it, it, for WB to come in and say, okay, it's cool, where I understand, let, let's take it from the company perspective. Mm -hmm. It's easier for them to sit there and say, why are we sitting here even fucking with this bullshit? Just tell them no. Because if we don't tell them yes, then we got to get wrapped up in all of this legalese and hire all these lawyers and end up spending that, spending a million dollars to approve something that's going to be made for a million dollars. So, I mean, that that's right. where, yeah. you know, and... It, I understand the passion and the fan side of it and everything, but man, you open up fucking ridiculous can of worms, even for common people that own intellectual property. I mean, and both shit. Star Trek and Star Wars, in some ways, profited enormously in the infancy of their development from fans making up, you know, fiction and films anyway. It's, I think it's a different world than it was yeah. well, it's, back it's, then. Well, yeah, it's a different world, but, like, if there's one franchise that out of the gate didn't need or desire or, I mean, sorry, didn't need fan fiction, it's Harry Potter. It was a huge hit. Yeah. And yet they're still like, yeah, sure. Maybe and, and maybe yeah, it gives I, us leverage with maybe, Disney and whatnot. Maybe this yeah. is built, I mean, this you, you read this somewhere, but I don't, I don't know what the extent of the deal is. Where Warner Brothers, right. they may go in and go, yeah, we're letting this film be made, but there are, you know, just like Paramount had, there are rules and regulations, and yeah. it can't be yeah. over twenty minutes. Who knows? And uh, they you, can't profit from it. They've yeah, said yeah. And on top of that, too, is is that you know the devil's hand wrote this contract that these motherfuckers are going to have to sign to actually Precisely. make this happen. So, but there you go, cool stuff. There's our news.
You are listening to Popcorn, Piss, and Vinegar. Television. Movies. Pop culture. Keep up with the latest news from Luke Skywalker all the way to Batman. From Netflix to the CW. And all the news in between. Please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Or stream our episodes from ppvguys.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at ppvguys. Check out our friends Not Real Radio at notrealradio.com for our segment, Not Real Movie News. Should you listen to more? Yes. Will you agree? Maybe. Jury's out. Indeed. Thank Thank you for listening and action. All right, we are going to talk about Wonder Woman, spoiler free. Um, unfortunately, John hasn't seen it yet. We we were hoping he was going to check it out, but um, just didn't get around to doing it. He's uh, he's a, a busy deluge guy. of he's work. Busy he's yeah. a deluge just, of work. He's I had to go see guy. it for him. Yeah. Not only do I do the news by myself, I go see movies by myself. Where where did you go see it? I actually went to uh to Elmwood. Oh, to you see went it okay on Thursday. I saw the first showing Thursday night, and it was not a very packed theater. I was very sh- we got there early and everything, and huh. no line, wasn't packed. Huh. Uh, we didn't get good trailers. It was just very uneventful. My my theater experience was very eventful. Um, I saw it at the uh, Clearview Elmwood. I saw it at their version of the Dolby Theater. The Clearview, the Palace. Clearview, the Clearview Palace AMC. They have a Dolby. How is it? Um, is it as good? Yeah, I mean the experience of the movie is good. The thing with it is, is that the seats are a little bit more compact because it's a smaller room. Right. But as far as the audio visual right. quality, it's every bit there. It's okay. like anything else. You got to just kind of find the sweet spot. I've been to that theater now a few times, so I know what the sweet seats the controls are. Controls are different too. Controls are a little different on the chair, but yeah. it does the same shit. Okay, it's just that the chairs are a little bit more narrow. Like like you have plenty of sitting room. You don't have as much armrest room yeah. as you it's, do on the ones in in Elmwood. Okay, but it's it's fine. It, it's it's a it is a far superior experience to seeing something in standard. You know, in a standard showing. Um. When I got there, um, I was supposed to go with my girlfriend. Um, she had to cap, uh, you know, cap out on me, so I brought her. Uh, I brought her cousin with me, and he's kind of a kind of a quiet little dude, you know, cool cool guy, but uh, you know, really really quiet. So we show up, we get our seats. I have a couple that's sitting next to me, and sitting next to that couple is a guy and his daughter. Well, apparently, what happened was is that. The couple sitting next to me had two friends that bought those seats. Well, the guy and his daughter decided that they were going to assume control of the seats and then basically fight people for them. So the girls come back and they say, well, look, those are our seats. We bought them. And this guy starts going through some fucking bullshit of how, well, I have it on Snapchat these are my seats. Now, we're in the middle of the previews right now. So I'm kind of see the writing on the wall. So I looked at the girl and I told her, I said, look, it makes no difference whether he's got it on Snapchat. makes no difference whether he's got it on Facebook. It makes no difference if there's an airplane flying in the sky, skywriting the motherfucker right now. The seats aren't his. Do you have the printed tickets that are your seats? Yes. Go to management and get it taken care of. Well, naturally, she goes to take off. Dick Breath gets up with his daughter and goes and finds the right seat. Right. After he tells the guy, you know, all this bullshit. Well, what I thought was really funny was is the guy sitting that was with the people that the seats belonged to. He uh, he says uh, that the the guy who started the shit. He says, "I'm not afraid of you." The guy sitting says, "I'm not afraid of you either." To you? Uh, no, no, no. Saying. They're talking to each other, but I'm in the middle of this shit. Uh-huh. So the guy's like, I'm not afraid of you. He says, look, I'm not afraid of you either. So look, do me a favor. Go be not afraid somewhere else. <laughs> I was like, that's fucking awesome. I can't believe that that dude wanted to get in a fight with his kid. And the daughter was probably about maybe six years that's old. Stupid. And they're sitting there motherfuckering each other with uh. this kid. I mean, dude, come on. But needless to say, after he got his ass run up the road, I properly applied high fives. Nice to 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 the to the party that belonged. Because, dude, look, let me tell you, Dolby Theater to me now is church. It's your religion, right? Don't disrespect church. Mm-hmm. Don't talk in church. Don't rattle bags too loud in church. And for God's sake, don't steal some motherfucker's seats in church. Don't do that. Yeah, uh, so, don't look at inter- your phone in church. We, well, what's interesting is that he was insisting that Snapchat. I don't proof. even know what that means. I just well, I'm going yeah. along with your story. I don't know what that means. I know what it means, and he's full of shit. Well, I was just about to say Snapchat at least initially, 
was a draw for everybody because it would erase everything after t- 10 or 20 minutes. So why would you use that social I, I, media all platform? All I know is if like, I have to prove that I have a ticket to a movie, I'm just going to pull out the ticket to a movie. Right. How did he get in the movie? He didn't get into the theater with Snapchat. He didn't get into the theater with Facebook. I don't. Well, the thing with it what, is, is that look, what excuse, what what kind of excuse is that? For those of you all who want to know the secret of the Clearview Theater, and you live here locally, and you want to go to the Clearview Dolby Theater, the yeah. best seats in the house are row G, seats eleven and twelve. Those are the best seats in the house. Okay. You have no obstruction from the barrier wall. You can see the screen a hundred percent, and it is dead center of the theater. Okay, it's the best seats. Well, these two young ladies had. G11 and G12. Uh, well, this okay. motherfucker went in there and he was going to take G11 and G12. Bully him. And try to bully him out of the seats. Well, it was later revealed that Dick Face had D6 and D7, which was like four, you know, four, right. two rows down. So, but yeah, but that that was that was my eventful experience in the in the movie, you know. Let's talk about the uh, movie. Oh wait, and there was one guy that was sitting to the right of me <laughs> that wouldn't stop talking and the little cousin leans over to me, my girlfriend's cousin. And he says, God, man, this dude ha- like keeps talking. And I said loud, yeah, he hadn't shut the fuck up yet. And that shut him up after that. So so it was worked out. Church was Beautiful. fine. We had two minor disruptions. Wow. But then after that, everything was good. Well played, sir. Yeah. Well played. I, yeah, I was about to throw my drink on him. But, you know. I, oh, I, that would I, be great. I, you, you can't, like I said, you can't fuck with church. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to the non-spoiler review of Wonder Woman. Um, I'll start it off real quick. Uh, DC finally gets it. They understand. Um, Hart's heroics and um, humor was laced throughout the movie, as Jeff John said that he wanted to see in the movie. Elegantly? Um, It is elegantly placed in the movie. It's not, um, to be honest with you, I found the humor to be more... I found the humor to be more natural than what you see in a Marvel movie. The, it was a lot oh, more natural A lot more natural humor. The, the Marvel shit is... The Marvel shit's kind of like comebacks and banter and all this shit. The humor mm-hmm. came from Wonder Woman's or Diana's naivety the of, 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 yeah. of living in a, in, a, in a hidden place her entire life and being exposed to, you know, being exposed to the, to the regular world. But the humor is legitimately funny. Like, it's not like it never seems forced. It's it's beautiful, perfectly Chris, played. Chris Pine's good. Um, Chris Pine, man, he's a charming bastard, man. I mean, he <laughs> was. I, I thought he was great. Um, I, I, honestly, man, I mean, this thing. I, I don't think that this movie is as good as something like Winter Soldier or the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I, I think that it's right up there with like the first Iron Man movie, like flawed flawed but not shitty like it's not a perfect movie i find that the end doesn't fall apart but i find the end is kind of choppy it's kind of edited weird as far as things are concerned i think that they could have cleaned that up a little bit more probably with a little bit of better reshoots but the first and second act fucking flawless i mean dude it's wow. oh it's beautiful it's absolutely perfect I- Iron Man 1 is my perfect, that was my perfect analogy. But for this reason, and it's sort of the same reason, and the fact that I love Iron Man 1, but when you get, you know, when you get to the third act, the bad guy is kind of like, eh, all right, I get it. You're the bad guy. I don't, <laughs> I don't hate you like I hate other bad guys in movies. And I felt this way for this movie as well. Like when we get to the bad guy, big battle, I was like, eh, I don't care about you as much. You're not really doing it for me. I thought that the villains, I thought the villains were kind of like unique. You know, I, I like the Lady Poison character. Yeah, she was yeah. fucking just cool looking. It's mm-hmm. like anything with the villains. You know, what I mean, I, I, I think that the villains played to the purpose of the story. They weren't really anything memorable or anything really killer, but they played beautifully to the purpose of the story. Um, wh- where. The thing that I also lo- not like, I love about the movie. I think World War One was the perfect. It was the perfect setting for this movie. Huh. Um, a lot of people, you know, we're so used to kind of having World War Two kind of ingrained, you know, with Nazis and right. all that stuff. A lot of people don't realize how fucking unethical and how dirty and how destructive World War One really was. Oh, nasty! And if you're gonna yeah, play. They- if you're going to play to the strengths of 
the war to end all wars, and Ares is the guy who's kind of like, you know, stroking this along, which that's not really a spoiler. You know, I mean, Ares is the god of war. We've covered this on the show. That's the obvious thing is that he's mm-hmm. the guy who wants to keep war going. There's some interesting twists to it that are a lot of fun, which I cool. won't spoil. But yeah. um, but I think World War One was the perfect setting. It was not only because of the 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 terrible conditions and and unethical uses of weaponry and chemical weapons that were part of that war. I think the other thing too is, man, you're talking about the height of woman suffrage, man. You know, and I mean, that's the thing. You're getting into that era to where women are still very oppressed, and I mean, it it's beautifully played. I mean. It is it is a fucking great movie. I mean, if I, I, it's like I said earlier in the in the in the news portion, DC, I guarantee you, with what they're looking at right now, mm-hmm. they're seriously reshuffling the deck right now. I wonder how this plays into um, into Justice League at this point, knowing how strong this movie was compared to the other films that may or may not have, you know, gotten the criti- the critical acclaim that this film is getting. I I think I'll put it to you this way. There's a reason Joss Whedon was called in. Yep. Oh, and I, yeah. I, can, I think yeah. they're all going to downplay his contributions because Joss Whedon doesn't need any more glory, and Zack Snyder's been through a terrible ordeal. You know, yep. I've I've been shitting all over that guy, but no one deserves what he's been through. It's terrible, and I think they're all going to take the high road. But I do think that, that creatively. That being said, I mm-hmm. agree with you, but. It doesn't change my opinion that he fucked everything no. up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Proceed. Yeah, no. It, uh, he, he was still the wrong choice. You know, a tragedy doesn't retroactively make it good shit. It's just, yep. you know, that I think that PR-wise, they're not going to disrespect Zack Snyder in any way, shape, or form. But I think that I do believe that uh, Joss Whedon is probably infusing the reshoots with a lot more Joss whedon magic than they're admitting to and that's fine i think there's going to be a lot of i think the things that have been shot are going to remain there i think the tone of that movie is going to be changed in the editing in these reshoots yeah, yeah. i i i as as much as we said this was a lighter movie i still felt like it was a pretty dark a pretty heavy movie too like, yeah there were times where i was like "Ooh, this is just you know, again, World War One as your background, it's pretty, it's pretty brutal at times. Some of the better scenes are when it gets the heaviest, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but still. Now you know. let me ask you this, Chris, because I already heard from Scott. Were there any, like, f yes moments? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. The f yes moments. What I loved, and I was waiting for it. They held back the Junkie XL Hans Zimmer theme. They held it for her first big action scene. Oh, and it's fantastic. And it is <laughs> cool. fucking phenomenal. And I tell you what makes it phenomenal. The first thing that makes it phenomenal is, is that it is not a big gob of shit exploding, things punching one another, other things flying at high speeds and bouncing all over the away. place. It is clean, choreographed, matrix style fight scenes nice yeah. Yeah. another thing that's really refreshing too it's really cool to see a person dressed as an armored knight just fighting against humans in plain clothes yeah it's pretty fucking awesome cool. <laughs> yeah i mean parademons and fucking you know androids and you know right. you know f- yeah. you know Ultron fucking droids and, and, you know, Chitauri fucking warriors coming out of the sky in New York. Dude, I love that shit. Love it. But it was really nice to see this movie kind of take a step back and say, we don't need all this real big, grandiose shit. I mean, yeah, we'll hold stuff off for the final battle and kind of put... But even the final battle was tame in comparison to things like you see in Dawn of Justice. The the best part of Dawn of Justice, the only moment in that movie I really enjoyed it was the when when Batman beats the shit. Yeah, out the of warehouse the thugs. fight. Yeah, right. It, I mean, there isn't anything terribly involved in that relative to you know uh, apocalypse or whatever changing and spears and 
all that shit. Yeah, uh, you know? Doomsday, yeah. Doomsday, yeah, sorry. Uh, so I'm I'm ex- I like I like what I'm hearing. I I think you'll really like it. Um that's really my only criticism, man, is that, you know, it, it, it's you know, I mean the the, the five-star general, man, I'm I'm man, I I I'm I'm hesitant to give it five stars, but man, I tell you, without that little choppy ending, man, I'd give it four and a half. Yeah. I'd probably give it three and a half to four because of the ending. Uh, and I, I kind of felt like some of the heavier, like I said, some of the heavier parts are really good, but I really liked the Amazonian shit way better than I liked the World War One stuff. And my, that's me. I had somebody ask me, how does this movie compare to Captain America, the first one? It's easy to draw comparisons to it, but they're not really alike because Captain America plays a lot more on the propaganda of World War II, as mm-hmm. it should. Yeah. Right. I mean, as it should, because that's what the character was designed for. But the thing with it is, is the war scenes and the World War II stuff is a shitload more grittier. I'll tell you what this movie is, and you can draw definite comparisons to the first Thor movie. The Asgardians and Thor dog shit compared to the Amazonians yeah. and Wonder oh, Woman. Okay. Garbage it's compared funny because, to the Amazon- Amazonians. Uh, be- that was my concern. Is like, okay, they're going to establish the rules. And I, and I had read uh, the interview with Patty Jenkins, the director. She had said, it's Superman meets the Little Mermaid. So I was I was watching, you know, in the, the trailers, you know, the, the, the Amazon training sequences, and I'm like... I hope that isn't boring, you know. So no, it's actually it really cool. It's actually really cool, and they don't they don't go overboard. Like I, it, you know, for the Thor stuff, you get to see you know the how elaborate and how deep into that world it gets, and everything is so detailed. With this, mm-hmm. it's really just scenery. It's background, and the characters yeah. are more in the forefront. Where cool, where you know Thor talking to Odin is never important. It's sort of just dialogue that happens. Whereas in yeah. this film, all the dialogue that happens in, on the Amazonian part of it, it, it all matters. It all matters. And uh, and Robin Wright is great. Oh, yeah. She's fun. she's phenomenal, dude. The, dude, the yeah. Amazonians, man. When, <laughs> dude, with it, their big battle scene. Yeah. Where they get to fucking, like, whip ass. Yeah, is, on the beach. Oh, makes oh, arrow, dude. It makes Arrow look like a... You know, it, it's, a joke. <laughs> it, it's exactly what we said years ago. It, it it's like three hundred. That it's you know, a brighter version. It's a right. less orange, brighter version of three hundred. Oh, I, mean, I did watch Zach part Snyder of this here. going. Man, I wish Zack Snyder would have had a little part in this. But then you maybe know, he I, did. Maybe because he yeah. did. He did produce. I mean, right. I watched all. I, I stayed for the credits, obviously, and uh, you know, I saw his name all over the place. So yeah. But it did remind me a lot of the 300, a lot of the Amazon. But, again, I like 300, and I thought this was definitely and I'll, I'll, par. I'll throw two more things out there. One I can't really get too heavy into because it gets really spoilery. But once, you know, a couple of weeks go by, we'll cover it. One thing that I thought was great, I'm not a comic book expert by any means, but I try to brush up on my DC as the years go by to kind of just keep up on stuff, even though I'm not an avid reader anymore. But knowing the old mythology of Wonder Woman, I thought it was fucking great that they took all of the core things from her origin and put them in this movie. Even if it ended up not being part of the quote-unquote true origin, they took elements of every version before she was retconned and moved it into this story. Oh, and cool. juggled it around, which I thought was fucking fantastic. Another thing I'll say also, man, Gal Gadot, no better person that you can cast as Wonder Woman. She, her range of emotion and people saying, oh, that bitch doesn't have the acting chops to play Wonder Woman. Go fuck yourself. She's, <laughs> okay. Dude, she's fantastic. There's, man, look, sadness. To, to watch, you could sit there and watch where, like, she is emotionally devastated into another scene to where it comes out and, dude, she's like, she's laughing. And she's, you know, she. Mm. It, uh, it's it's good to see that from a DC there, character. She just no. Uh, she brooded when she had the brood, right. but she had much more ranges of emotion except just brooding. So, yeah, there, I, and I won't give away this scene either. But there are parts where she actually, where she goes on. She's like, "Why is 
why are these things happening? Why can't it be this way? And why? Because we, the way we used to do it is A, B, and C. Why aren't you doing it A, B, and C? And like, you can see the legitimate, like she's getting pissed and it's, but for reasons that you or I, anyone for that matter would go, you know, in, in 2017, like, yeah, why, why aren't you doing it this way? That makes zero sense to me. Yet she's doing it in, you know. Well, the, the thing with the character, great. the thing with the character that they play beautifully is the fact that she, her whole belief system and her whole knowledge of history is entirely based on what's been taught to her in terms of Greek mythology. Her whole thing is, is that, you know, it, it's, it's like, like anything, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to slay the big bad guy. And then after I slay the big bad guy, everything is going to be fucking harmonious and wonderful. Well, she learns that's not true. And the way the lessons that she learns at the ends of the movie is fantastic. And other thing, too, before we wrap it up here, that's great. You don't have to see Dawn of Justice to actually know what's going on in this movie. It totally stands alone. There's one little scene at the end and one little scene at the beginning that can kind of be counted as an Easter egg. Hmm. If you if you had no idea that Dawn of Justice even existed as a movie, and but you knew about comic books, the beginning and end are could could kind of fall into the realm of being an Easter egg. Any post credit sequences? Nope. None. Okay. Uh, I also heard that uh, Lucy Davis, who was in the UK version of The Office so and Shaun of the Dead. Uh, I heard she was. She nearly steals every scene she's in. Is that true? Or she's really good. She's good, but like I, I don't think she steals scenes. I think we see everything that she does in the trailers, and you know, there's a couple other scenes. I think, to, like I told you, I think this is a a Wonder Woman movie. The end. There's no other. It is a Wonder Woman movie, but what's great about it too is if anybody's like sat there and they're like all crying about feminism stuff, I can tell you that this movie is definitely a pro-feminism movie. But what's great is is that it doesn't go over the cliff with wackadoo bullshit. It's a woman about. It's a movie about a strong female warrior. And what else I appreciate also is that Steve Trevor, mm-hmm. played by Chris Pine, does not play second banana to her at all. He contributes to the story, oh, and cool. he pulls off his own shit that's fucking awesome. So, big thumbs up for Wonder Woman. I really hope that this has kind of got the, got the put you know has them in gear, and they've kind of got a foot in their ass now to to follow in the vein of this. I'm, I, I'm down, man. Yeah, I mean, I I'm interested to see how they pull it off. I just I just hope that they can salvage the Joker and let. Jared Leto act instead of do an impression of Jim Carrey in the mask, you know? We'll see what happens, yeah. man. So Fingers crossed. All right, anything to add here, uh, add for the show here? I have to see Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah you, you do. do. I, I, when you said Joker and Jared Leto and I don't even know if that exists. I'm like, that just doesn't exist. This is, <laughs> this is new. <laughs> unfortunately, we'll unfortunately, it exists. We just don't acknowledge it anymore. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, well, look, Five Star General says, give us five stars on iTunes. Also visit Scary Thoughts and Not Real Radio. Check it out for them also. We'd appreciate it if you give them five stars. You can all check out our previous episodes at ppvguys.com. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at ppvguys. We're also, uh, the shows are going back on YouTube, so if you were a YouTube fan, you want to be back up there as well. Well, since we can't do star ratings on YouTube, what we do ask you to do on YouTube... Subscribe. Subscribe and give us thumbs up on those videos. So thank you. Damn right. And scene.